Good morning, and Happy New Year. I'm Pastor Michael Thompson DeGrieff, the senior pastor here at Trinity United Methodist Church, and on behalf of Pastor Kim and myself, welcome to Trinity and welcome to worship this morning. Uh, did you get a star on your way in here? Yes, everybody got a star? I think mine's bigger than yours, though. <laughs> there, if you want a bigger one, they're in the basket. It's, this is the secret. They're in the basket back there. You can get a bigger one. Well, I'm glad you have it. You're all stars. You all got a gold star for coming to church today, right? There you go. That feels good. Um, I want to remind you that we welcome all people as children of God. We believe that every person is worthy of dignity, respect, and love. I want to invite you to fill out the attendance registers that are at the end of the pews there and pass those down and welcome any visitors or guests that you see here this morning. Uh, this Wednesday, we'll kick off our Wednesday evening ministries again. There'll be a meal uh, starting at 5, 5.45-ish, and, um, and we'll have all of our classes, our music, everything for children and adults and youth. So I hope you'll join us on Wednesday night. We have a couple of special offerings coming up in January. One of them is Human Relations Day on January 15th, um, and that goes to support the work of our denomination throughout the world. And so if you're able to give to that, we appreciate it. And we'll, we'll tell you more about it on the 15th. Um, we have a special fundraiser coming up for the Salt Hawk Community Support, which is our ministry in the high school and in the middle school eight. Um, and if you're available on January 20th, we have this incredible event called Men Cook. Um, and there'll be lots of incredible food and there's uh, drinks and it's just a fun night. And it's $45 a ticket. We have the tickets in the office today if you want to buy one. It's always well attended, it's a lot of fun, and it raises a tremendous amount of money for this important ministry. Um, and you can try my son's smoked brisket if you come. Uh, that, I mean, it's going to be, and a bunch of you out here are competitors, I know that. Um, so we'll be, we'll be competing for an award too. So uh, join us on January 20th for that. There's a leadership, com leadership summit coming up on January 21st. This is the second annual. We had one last year. Now, this is a gathering of all the leaders, all the committees, all the ministry teams, all the staff. We'll all get together after church from 12 to 2 on January 21st. And our main focus that day will be talking about the future of Trinity, some strategic planning and some, some deep diving and asking questions together about where God's calling us to go. So I'm looking forward to having that conversation with you that day. And then finally, I uh, want to let you know we're taking a special offering on January 28th that'll support our soup kitchen ministry. <coughs> that fund is used to buy the food that we serve at the soup kitchen. So if you're able to donate to that, we appreciate it. All right, let's take a moment now to get ourselves prepared for worship as we hear the prelude.
you please stand and join me in the call to worship? Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The glory of God shines in the darkness. Lift up your eyes and look around. Follow the star wherever it leads. Take the journey that leads to the child. Let your hearts rejoice, be overwhelmed with joy. We worship the ch Christ child, the hope of the world. Please join me in praying the people's prayer. Lord of living light, we hear the story of the Magi and tie it together with our warm Christmas celebration. It feels comfortable to us. Break those bonds of comfort and help us to realize the risk of witness and discipleship for those who follow your light. Shine brightly in us and through us. 
forgive the blindness we so often offer you. Give us a vision of what you ha would have us be and do in the light of your love. Your light has come and it has erased the darkness. Now we can walk and work in the light in service. Amen. During this time of prayer, we can share what's going on in our lives so we can be praying for one another. There's a few things that are printed in the bulletin. I want to just uh, lift up that we've had a few deaths recently in the church family. And Thursday, we had this service for Phyllis Snyder, and these flowers are from that service. On Saturday, we had a service for Nancy Costello. And tomorrow morning, we'll have a service for Charles Stute, and that'll be here at 1030. So let's pray for all those families who have lost loved ones recently. I also just want to lift up in general those who have been affected by COVID. Quite a few church members and people that we all know have been sick recently, been kind of a wave of COVID. So we just want to pray for those and um, pray for our community. Uh, I know you all come here with joys and concerns on your hearts to lift up in prayer. So I want to invite you to join me in a time of silent prayer as we speak to our Lord. There is a time to be born and a time to die, and this is a time to be born. So we turn to you, God of life, God of all our years, God of our beginnings, and we dare pray that you will do for us and among us and through us what is needful for newness of life. Lord, give us the power to be receptive, to take the newness you give, to move from womb warmth to real life. We make this prayer not only for ourselves, but for our school at the brink of birth, for our church at the edge of life, for our city waiting for newness, and for your whole creation with which we yearn in eager longing. This is a time to be born and it is now. We sense the pangs and the groans of your newness. Come here now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Do I have any kids that would like to come up and join me today? boys. Glad to see you guys today. Did you have a good Christmas? Yes. Awesome. Okay, I have a question for you. Have you ever seen in maybe cartoons or, or something like that where somebody has a really good idea and so a light bulb appears over their head and it goes ding. Have you ever seen that? Yes. You have? Okay. All right. Good. So like if you had a really good idea, you'd go, <gasps> ding, and the light bulb would, it, you know, it would have been better if this had lit up, but I couldn't figure that out. So, okay. Well, um, if I was at my house, you know, I was thinking of good ideas that I could have and I could say, hey, we should get another dog. Ding. And my husband would go, no, we should not. 
Um, or maybe one of my really good ideas that I have a lot is I go, you know what, we should all go out for ice cream. Yes? Okay, are you getting some of my good ideas? Now sometimes, you know, with my own kids, I would have said things like, hey, if you guys help me clean up, then I'll play games with you later. Yes? Now, okay, sometimes what's a good idea for one person, you know, other people may not agree with, but that's okay. Okay, but so sometimes when we have these, we call them light bulb moments. Okay, now what, have you guys ever had any good ideas? Have you guys had any light bulb moments? What, can you think of any? That's kind of hard to think of, isn't it? You, you can't remember any, have you ever had any good ideas, Dutton? Yes, I know you have. And so then the light bulb would go ding, and we'd go, oh, what a great idea, right? Well, sometimes, it, we could call those light bulb moments something a little different. We could, somebody might say, oh, I had an epiphany, which is kind of like saying I had a really good idea or I figured something out. Now, have you guys heard the word epiphany before? It's kind of a strange word, isn't it? Epiphany it starts with an E, and it means to have a really good idea, but it also means something else. It's also one of our Christian holidays that we celebrate, that we're celebrating today. And it comes right after Christmas, and it has to do with the wise men. Now, what do you guys know about the wise men? They were star studiers. They were star studiers. Yes, Dutton, what else do you know about the wise men? The songs we sing say there were how many? Three. Yeah, the Bible doesn't actually say how many there were, but yeah, the songs we sing say there were three. And they were, who were they going to find? Baby Jesus. Baby Jesus, exactly. They were going to find baby Jesus. Okay, so they started out, and they didn't have a light bulb moment that went off. They had another light. What was the light that the wise men had? The star. The star, exactly. They got this idea or an epiphany that they should go and find baby Jesus. And so they followed the star to do that. And did you know it took them like two years to get there? So when they found him, how old was baby Jesus? Like he was like two years old, yeah. And they weren't even living in the stable or wherever they had had the baby. They were in a house somewhere. And so they, of course, brought Jesus gifts, just like you would do if you'd go visit somebody who had had a new baby, and they were really excited to worship him. Okay, so since it's Epiphany, I wanted, wondered if you guys would spend a little bit of time, you don't have to do this right now, but thinking about what God's light bulb ding, moment or, or star moment might be for you. What do you think God wants you to do this year? Now, maybe it's, I've got some ideas. Maybe it's, um, he wants you to be more kind to Can your siblings. He wants you to pray more. Yes, that would be a great light bulb moment. I know, I know. We, al we always say Dutton's got it figured out. Yep. Yeah, maybe he wants you to pray more. Or maybe he wants you to be kind. Or maybe he wants you to listen better. And so instead of thinking of that whole phrase, like instead of saying, oh, I should pray more, maybe your word could just be pray, or your word could be kind, or listen. And so I want you guys to think about that, and Kim, Pastor Kim's going to talk to you more about this and talk to all of you about this, so I don't want to blow the punchline here, but I want you guys to think about, did you guys get a star when you came in? Okay, I want you guys to think about what it is that you think God's star moment or light bulb moment should be this year for you. And then maybe you can write it on here and then you can keep it somewhere where you'll remember it. All right? Does that sound good? Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for sending us Jesus and thank you for the story of the wise men. Help us to be like the wise men and follow you wherever you think we should go. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.
Today's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew. Listen for the word of God. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Have you ever been lost? Well, sometimes that happens even with a GPS when it sends you down an obscure road. It's hard to find your bearings, and the whole process can be very frustrating. Wouldn't it be nice to have a star to follow like the one that led the wise men to the Christ child? What would it be like to have our own personal stars in 2024? Stars that help us stay focused and purposeful. Imagine the possibilities. Let us pray. God of each day, you tell us to acknowledge you in all our ways and you'll make our path straight. We come to you at the first of a new year asking for your guidance and strength for the new adventure of 2024. Amen. Yes, today is Epiphany Sunday. The word epiphany means an appearance of a divine being or an unexpected discovery. The scripture passage describes the Magi, wise men who were scholars of the stars, and how they discovered Jesus. Now, most nativity scenes show the magi crowded into the stable of Jesus' birth, along with the shepherds and the animals, an angel, Mary, Joseph, and the baby. However, the magi were later visitors, as Terry noted. Two years later, they showed up and entered the house to find Jesus. But whatever the time and place, these Gentile visitors from the east knelt down and adored Jesus. Opening their treasures, they offered to Jesus gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, the gift seems a bit odd for a little one, doesn't it? We expect baby clothes and toys, yet these gifts speak to Jesus' future. Gold is a gift fit for a king. Frankincense is used in temple worship, a gift fit for a priest. The high priest uses myrrh as anointing oil. It's also used to prepare bodies for burial, and Nicodemus will bring a mixture of alloy and myrrh to prepare, prepare Jesus' body for burial. These gifts foretold Jesus' death and resurrection as the Savior of the world. The Magi returned to their own country by another way. In other words, they were given a new route designed by God to bypass Herod and his minions. The Magi finished what they came to do. Now let's take a moment 
to acknowledge how these men trusted the star sent by God that they followed for two years. Through all the twists and the turns of their travels, even meeting King, mean King Herod, the star led them. And as we think about being led by God, I would hope that each of us want this upcoming year to be our gift to God as we serve um, in every capacity of our ordinary days. Now, I highly recommend that we take a moment to inventory our lives as we move into the future. We need to look backward and take an honest inventory of the last year. How was your 2023? What did you excel at as you managed your life? Where did you fall short? What about the f- things you want to do to make the future better? What do you need to let go of? How about those unfinished projects? Projects? It's not that we don't plan to not finish them, uh, but we run out of energy and we have a lot of obstacles. Here are a couple examples. You finally start the kitchen remodeling project, but then the sump pump fails and you have to deal with a flooded basement. Somehow you never get back to the kitchen remodel. Oh, I don't know, maybe you resolve to be more intentional about your devotional and prayer life. Being intentional so you can rearrange your schedule to allow yourself a half an hour of quiet time at home. But just as you're getting into your prayers, the first three telemarketing calls interrupts you, and the kid next door rings your doorbell to ask you to buy candy or the school fundraiser. Now, I'm not trying to keep a lot of guilt on those of us who struggle with unfinished projects. However, suppose we want to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. In that case, that means following through on intended good deeds, spiritual disciplines, missions to which we're called, and hopefully resolutions to let go of prejudices and hatred. It means doing the right thing long term and following Jesus as consistently as we can in our daily living. Now, it's not uncommon for us to make a good start toward where we think God is pointing us. And we really shouldn't be surprised that that is when a fresh wave of problems and obstacles hit us. We should not be overwhelmed if Things that have never gone wrong go wrong. And our passion for the task just evaporates. Life is like that. Our prayer for ongoing discipleship might be like this. Help me, oh God, while my enthusiasm is leaking away and my energy is failing and problems are multiplying to continue to do your will. And as we grow and mature in the faith, we realize that Christian life is not only a matter of repentance and commitment, but it's a matter of perseverance. We need to always keep getting back up. We need to keep trying with God's help. Paul told the Galatians, So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap the harvest um, if we do not give up. The choice is to never quit and to get back up when knocked down. I know that's hard to do. Let's go back to the scriptures and find some faithful servants who persevered in the temple waiting for the birth of Jesus. Simeon and Anna recognized the presence of God in the infant Jesus. Simeon, we're told, had been looking forward to the consolation of Israel. He was waiting patiently. Anna, 84 years old, never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. Both signed up for the long haul, and both were faithful until the end. Like the Apostle Paul, who modeled perseverance, we need to keep fighting our good fight. He said, I've fought the good fight, I've finished the race, I've kept the faith. His words, of course, refer to more than just simply 
completing a mission project, or seeking more holiness and living. It's the completion of a whole life of discipleship. Let me say that again. A completion of a whole life of discipleship. We are at the start of a new year, and it's a good time to ask important questions. Ask yourself, in the coming year, how can you build accountability into your life to encourage faithful discipleship? Think about what keeps you from making um, those intentions. Think about new ways of calling afresh on God. Perhaps you need to set an intention uh, with one word. The book, One Word That Will Change Your Life by John Gordon, encourages us to uh, name one word that keeps us focused throughout the year and our lives. So I challenge each of us to prayerfully consider one word as a focus for the year ahead. It can be your driving force. No goals, no wish, want lists or wish lists, just one word. This word can bring clarity, power, and focus as you stay focused on the things of God and make positive life changes. This, this one word can impact all the dimensions of your life. When you pray about it and find it, you should live it and share it with others. So you have your own star today. For those at home, I encourage you to get out a sheet of paper and draw a star. And I want you to prayerfully consider your word for the year ahead. A word that will help you persevere. My word is intentional. So my focus for the year ahead is to be intentional in watching for the ways and the movements of God all around me. To intentionally be present. To, be, to make a space for God to uh, start using me maybe in new ways. So I share that word with you. Think about a word that you may embrace for the year ahead. Be open to the word that God shares with you. This, will, this word will shape and mold you to become the person you're meant to be. If you didn't get a star, you can get one on the way out. We have plenty of them for you. On the day of Epiphany, we remember the coming of the light of Christ into the world. A light that drives out the darkness and despair. With Jesus, we have the gift of forgiveness. And we don't have to wander in the dark ways of life. With Jesus, we're given a Christian connection with Christ and each other. So we don't have to be isolated and do this journey all by ourselves. So when the light of Christ shines in our life, we realize that nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. But Christ's light does more than make us feel good. It changes our attitude toward the world around us. Jesus helps us to see the world in new light. One that reveals that people around us are not enemies or opponents. They are human beings made in the image and likeness of God. The light of Christ gives us strength for navigating challenges, such as forgiving instead of punishing, working for the common good instead of our narrow self-interest. Jesus invites us to see ourselves not as members of, of a particular family or community, but as citizens of the glorious kingdom of God. When we walk in the glory of the light of Christ, we discover that the goal of our lives is not to earn the most money or awards, close deals, or accumulate more possessions. Instead, when we follow the glory of the light of Christ, we become authentic men and women that God created us to be. The goal of our lives is to be um, abundant, uh, full human beings living abundantly and standing in the presence of our loving Lord. When the glory of the Lord is upon us, 
there's no way we're sitting on our hands. We will shout from the housetops. God has come to us. Our salvation is here to arise and shine. The light and glory of God are upon us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, with the help of God, follow your star. Amen. drink wine together on our knees. Let us drink wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, on me. Let us praise God together on our knees. Let us praise God together on our knees. When I fall on my knees with my face to Rising sun, oh Lord, have mercy on me. This morning we are celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion together. Uh, we're not going to use a traditional liturgy, I'm just going to share from my heart a few thoughts about communion today and and Holy Communion is a means of grace. This is an opportunity for us to remember what Christ did on the cross and to give thanks. We call this the Great Thanksgiving. It's an opportunity to praise and thank God for the gift of grace and salvation in Jesus Christ. A sacrament is a sacred moment. This is a sacred moment together. It's a new day, it's a new year. And we're celebrating epiphany, which literally means manifestation of God's presence, right? Manifestation. God is with us. And so this is a powerful moment we share together as we break bread and drink from the cup. And as we talk about a new year, a new year is an opportunity for a new beginning, uh, for new possibilities, new potential. And Kim's message was really inspiring for us to think about where God is calling us and to follow that star, right? To think of a word that can help guide us through the year 2024. I didn't have a word before your, your sermon. I'm feeling um, kind of full of the Holy Spirit because uh, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. And my word's going to be discernment. And, and, and we're, we're, as a church, we're in a time of discernment about where God's calling us to go and to be. Um, and I'm excited about that. And so discernment is really on my heart, and I'm inviting you to join me in that. But that's going to be the word that's going to guide my life. I'll discern uh, where God's calling the church, uh, how I can best serve the church, how we can uh, serve the church together and serve the kingdom. And so discernment's an important part of how I'm going to live out my calling, and, um, and that, that'll be the guiding star for me this year. And so I invite you to join me, um, or not to join me, but to, to be in a spirit of prayer as I offer a New Year's prayer. As our year changes and we come to you, O God, 
You, our God, are from everlasting to everlasting, and you do not change. Your steadfast love is our stability. We stop and consider as we begin this new year. There are old fears, but new boldness. There are old controversies, but new options. There are old problems, but new potential. You are a God of hope. Show us new dreams. You are a God of promise. Show us new possibilities. How great is your wisdom and knowledge. Your ways are beyond our comprehension. So teach us, O Lord. Your word is full of wisdom. Your spirit moves among us in unexpected ways. Teach us to think your thoughts, O God. For our for to understand you is better than offering gold. And to follow your way is better than bringing jewels. As we join the seekers for the Christ child, lead us by light of Christ's teaching. Show us the way. Guide us by your light. We bow down to worship you. We bring our lives as gifts of praise to you. We pray this in the name of the one who led the wise men and still leads those who seek him. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took a loaf of bread and he gave thanks and praise to God. He broke the bread and handed it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. When the supper was ended, Jesus took a cup and again he gave thanks and praise to God. He handed the cup to his disciples and said, take and drink. This is my blood that is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Everlasting God, the radiance of faithful souls, you brought the nations to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Fill the world with your glory and show yourself to all the nations through him who is the true light and the bright and morning star, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. All right, we're, uh, Pastor Kim and I are going to uh, serve communion to you. As you come forward, I want to remind you that this is the Lord's table. It's open to anyone who wants to come forward. Uh, God's grace is always available to you. So you do not need to be a United Methodist or a member of the church. You are welcome and wanted at the Lord's table. We have uh, gluten-free bread in the baskets right there if you prefer that. And then you'll get little cups of grape juice and you can drop them in the receptacles there as you go around. Um, other than that, um, just come forward when you're ready. And let's see.
Now we turn to our time of offertory, and I just want to remind you that uh, we don't pass the offertory offering plates, but we do have offering boxes in the narthex, so as you leave here today, if you brought cash or check, you can slide it in those boxes. You're also able to give online through Venmo or mail in a check or bring it by the office, and we give thanks for your generosity and appreciate you so much. Uh, I want to invite you now to join me by standing and singing the doxology. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. As long ago travelers laid their gifts before the Christ child, we too bring our gifts with joy. Use our gifts for justice and righteousness that oppression and violence may cease and peace may flourish. May the light of your love shine through our living that suffering may end, and all may rejoice in your gift of life. Amen. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise, unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in might. Thy justice like mountains, high soaring above. Thy clouds, which are fountains of goodness and love. Go forth with purpose. Be a shining beacon of faith. Follow your star. Amen. To all life thou givest, to both great and small. In all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree, and wither and perish, but not change at thee. Thou reignest in glory, thou dwellest in light. Thine angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. O Lord, we would render, O help us to see. Tis only the splendor of 